What's up everybody, Broskadamas here, and like I promised in my last video, I believe it was my demon skin farming video, I'm here to show you the build I was using while making that video. Now before I begin, it's important that I note that this is definitely a build in the earliest stages of beta. There's a lot more gearing that I need to do, and a lot more testing that needs to be done before I can say that this build is anywhere near complete. That being said, the build is working surprisingly well. I'm able to farm Torment 3 pretty comfortably. Torment 4 is a little slower than I would like, but then again, my gear is fairly bad. However, currently, I do not see this build being completely endgame tier 6 viable, necessarily. Though it is a lot of fun, it suffers from various problems that I'll explain later on in the video. But for now, let's go over what the build actually is. This is the 100% crit, low health Barbarian. Now the idea behind this is to reach 23% of your maximum health in order to kick in 100% crit and take advantage of Relentlessness. With that in mind, here's the skills I've chosen to use. The first skill is Whirlwind with Blood Funnel. Now, you might be asking, well why would I use Blood Funnel? I have 100% crit chance, wouldn't that cause my health to actually increase beyond what I'd like it to be? And to a point that's true, you have a default crit chance. But for this build, you want to have no crit chance on items. This will leave you at the default crit chance until you reach 23%. At 23%, all abilities gain 100% chance to crit, which means that every time you crit, you'll be healing for 1% of your maximum life. This will help you maintain your health around 23%. Occasionally, it will jump a little bit higher, you'll have spikes, but generally you're going to be taking enough damage on high enough torment that you'll remain at or below 23% health, maintaining your crit chance. In addition, because of the Relentlessness effect, Whirlwind will cost almost nothing to use under 35% maximum health, giving this a boosted potential to maintain your health without spending too much of your fury. All in all, this skill is here for support, and it allows you to maintain your 23% health threshold to the best of your abilities, without pushing you too far beyond. Now for our primary means of attacking, we're going to be using Seismic Slam with the Permafrost Rune. This rune gives you the most damage, however it takes away the knock up as well as a chance for a knock back. Though, after the change in 2.0.5, there's no longer any knock back, instead the skill has been changed to only knock up using the Fire Rune. So we won't be getting any kind of synergy with strong arm bracers for this one. However, because of 2.0.5, they've boosted the attack speed and the damage of the permafrost rune. The attack speed is across the board for Seismic Slam, not just permafrost. Now, Seismic Slam is an expensive skill to be spamming without a dedicated fury generator. However, with Relentlessness in place, its cost is going to be reduced by 75%, allowing it to be spammed fairly reliably, though I'm still working on the ability to generate proper fury to keep it spammable 100%. Now because I've chosen to use permafrost, I have chosen to build a cold build barbarian. This is for two major reasons. For one, the buff it received in 2.0.5 up to 755% weapon damage, and the fact that it slows enemies by 60%, even if it's just for one second. This allows you to control the field of battle a little bit better than you would using the other runes, as well as it gives you a chance to maintain some distance so you're taking less damage because you're already at low health. The chill effect will also benefit from the frostburn gauntlets if I can ever get them to drop. <laughs> Now the next skill I chose to use is Furious Charge with the Stamina Rune. This one's kind of a preference. You don't necessarily have to use Furious Charge or even Furious Charge with the Stamina Rune. The reason I've chosen to do this is because my Fury generation isn't 100% settled just yet. I do sometimes become Fury Starved after spamming Seismic Slam because I'm still missing items within the build that allow me to maintain constant spamming. With that being said, I've chosen to use this rune specifically because it allows me to generate more fury when I need it. It also allows me to generate more fury against bosses where I actually become fury to starve. But like I said, this option is really up for debate. Whether you want to use this or leap, or if you've already got a setup that allows you to spam, you can use this as a free slot for any other ability you want. Now the next ability is uh, somewhat interchangeable. It doesn't necessarily need to be Wrath of the Berserker. Uh, I choose to use the Insanity Rune for boosted damage for bursting down mobs that are either scary, I don't want to deal with for too long, or just for extra burst potential. 
You can easily use other runes if you desire, or you can change it up. I may in the future change this if I can ever get enough pieces of the Immortal King set that properly work with the uh, chess piece I'm using, then I may switch over to use Call of the Ancients. In fact, I would like to use Call of the Ancients together as one to further increase my toughness, given how I'll be fairly low health effectively. But again, this slot is also down to preference, though I'd recommend either Wrath of the Berserker because of how strong it is, or Call of the Ancients if you have the proper equipment. Now these next two, if uh, you're familiar with the Barbarian in any shape or form, are somewhat considered mainstays, though they don't necessarily have to be, as you can choose to play any way you want. However, for this one I've chosen Warcry with Impunity to further increase my toughness, as I would like to be as tough as possible, since I have no immediate health regen besides Blood Funnel with Whirlwind. I was previously using Invigorate, but once I switched to this build, you cannot have any kind of passive feeling, life on kill, this is sounding really bad, or uh, life on hit, so you have essentially no regen that you do not control yourself to be able to maintain low health at all times, though there's some problems with that that I'll go into a little bit later. For this one, it's simple. More cry with impunity. More defense. Not necessarily a bad thing. The next one is... Battle Rage. Now, Battle Rage is going to give you a 3% increased chance to crit, giving you a total of 8% baseline if you've stripped the crit chance off of all of your gear. The 8% over 5% is not a big deal, and uh, it generally, trade-off-wise, is much more worth it to have the ability, as Bloodshed gives you the 20% damage crit explosion to everything around the target you just crit, which can actually be quite devastating to packs, especially considering we're going to be critting with every hit. Though there are other options, I feel like this one is the strongest, considering we're going to be critting so often. Though I would like to hear if anybody else is using any different setups using the same build. I love hearing various points of view on similar builds. Now, on to the passive skills. The first passive I have is Ruthless. Ruthless gives you a 40% additional damage to enemies below 30% health, functioning as an execution assist. Though I feel like it does so much damage, I have to have it in all of my Barbarian builds. It's just so good, and I would highly recommend if you haven't tried it, to at least try it out and see what you think. Now the next passive I've chosen to use is Superstition. More defense, basically, is the baseline that I can give you there. 20% reduction to non-physical damage is never bad, and the bonus to Fury every time you take a ranged or a magic attack is just a bonus. This can be changed out if you feel like you're tough enough, but I just like this passive on most of my builds, and I use it on most of them. Next we have one of the two major parts of this build, the second being an item that I'm wearing in the chest slot, though I'm sure at this point most of you already realize what that's going to be. Relentlessness is going to allow us to continue to survive with effectively low health, and reduce the cost of all of our skills by 75%, allowing us to spam things that are, on their own, ridiculously costly. Using this in conjunction with the chess piece that I've chosen to use is going to allow us to survive and spam our strongest abilities almost indefinitely, reducing the need for a Fury Generator that doesn't go with Cold, which is part of the reason that I chose to go Cold. Now this final passive actually isn't permanent, it's actually a placeholder for me, I'm trying to work my way around not having it. The biggest fact is that you don't want your Fury to decrease, and you want to fight Decaying Fury. So the best way to do this without the Immortal King set, which keeps you from decaying fury if you have two pieces of it with the Ring of Royal Grandeur, or three pieces without, is Unforgiving. Unforgiving allows you to generate two fury per one second instead of decaying fury. I do plan to get rid of this once I get, well, two pieces of the Immortal King set and a Ring of Royal Grandeur that stops rolling two healing stats because that's kind of a problem right now. Now let's take a look at the second part that makes up the completion of this build, and that is the Shimizu's chest piece. This one rolled okay at 23% life. It can roll up to a maximum of 25, or the lowest point of 20%, I believe is the lowest. I'll have to double check that. Basically, this is what's gonna allow you to crit 100% of the time. I'm sure most of you had already guessed this just by seeing the title, but in case you didn't, here it is. Now because of my current vitality and my total health, I can sit around at about 100 to 105,000 health, and that's effective health. So effectively, you're running around with 105, 103,000 health at all times. 
to maintain your crit and maintain relentlessness even though relentlessness will jump in at 35 percent health it doesn't do you any good if you're not at 23 percent or below now before we think this is all great with no drawbacks there are three major drawbacks first you'll notice right away when you start to play and that is your inability to lower your own health in a controlled way this means basically you're going to be stuck running into a crowd of enemies and letting them beat on you until you're at your desired health. This may or may not be a problem depending on your difficulty level and how many mobs are around. It can definitely be a pain though, if there are not enough enemies to lower you to your desired health. The second is health globes. Health globes with this build are the most annoying things in this game. Maybe that or the way Diablo sets terror. I haven't decided yet, but in any case, they're really annoying. They're like landmines that you've been trained to slam your face into over and over again, but now they actually explode, if that makes sense. With this build, you're going to want to avoid health globes, as they bump your health up way too sporadically and uncontrollably. You're going to have a hard time staying at low health if you're picking up health globes, and sometimes you can't avoid them. If you're in a tight corridor, sometimes they're everywhere and you have to run through them, which means you have to slam your head into multiple enemies again to get back to your desired health. The best way that I could think to solve this is do your best to avoid them, always be moving just in case they throw them onto your face, and keep as low a pickup radius as possible. Other than that, short of adding an item that allows us to negate the healing of healing globes or remain at a certain amount of health no matter what, these are going to be a problem. Finally, and this will be a deal breaker for some people, you can't really play it in a group. I would love to be able to play this in a group with the people I usually play with as I usually play in a group, but it just doesn't work. Everybody else is going to be picking up health globes, which is going to be making your life miserable. Even with a group coordinated around knowing that you need to be at low health the entire time, it's just not feasibly possible to remain at that point with the possibility of anyone touching a health globe, anybody running into a shrine on accident, or any number of factors that could possibly raise your health. And just slow down your movement in general and have you have to slam into enemies and they have to hold back killing them because you need to lower your health. It's just not something that's going to work. That is, unless they do add an item that allows us to control our health. Blizzard. Mm-hmm. I would love it. I would use this all the time. It's so much fun and it's hilarious. Just need that item. You can do it. Alright. Aside from these problems, though, the build is still a lot of fun. And I would definitely recommend trying it out, at least just to say that you tried it out. Now, this build is not going to be a top tier T6 clearing face roll. The idea behind this build is, I found this item and I thought, hey, I want to try that. So I did. And I'm going to keep building it and see how effective I can make it. With that being said, your gear isn't super important as long as you make it as defensive as possible. And because you can give up your crit chance, on item rolls. You can focus on rerolling that to vitality or armor or anything like uh, all resist that makes you more tanky. So you can survive at lower health. When it comes to weapons, anything that increases your cold damage or your damage of choice. It, you don't have to do cold by any means. My items right now are somewhat placeholder as I've transitioned from a different build previously to this one because I thought it was interesting. The only other item I would suggest trying to get, or if you have it, trying to make work, are the Iron Toe Mud Sputters. And the reason for this is, as your health decreases, your movement speed will increase. And with that increased movement speed, it allows you to clear much faster. Because this movement speed can exceed your 25% maximum. So you can max your movement speed, and then get this increase. But, that's all there is to it to the build, and I would like to thank you for watching. Now, if you have not yet seen it, I did put up a gameplay demonstration of the build itself, which was somewhat of a teaser as well as just practice for me in video editing, and I had a lot of fun with it. So if you haven't seen that and you want to see some gameplay, I'll put a link in the description and an annotation so you can go right over to that and check it out if you're interested. And as far as this goes, I'll continue to build it. I would love to hear about your guys' builds, or if you guys have ever tried this, or if you guys have any suggestions, I'd love to hear it. Let me know. Just leave a comment, message me, whatever. I read everything. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.